Welcome to the IBHL Math presentation. Today, I'll be going through a past year exam question from May 2012, Paper 1, Time Zone 1. The question number is question 3. This question is a question on complex numbers. I know many of you find complex numbers to be extremely challenging. So I'm actually going through this question and I hope that there'll be, uh, you can learn much from it. Okay, question three. If z1 equals to a plus a root three i and z2 equals to one minus i, where a is a real constant, express z1 and z2 in the form r cis theta and hence find an expression for z1 over z2 raised to the power six in terms of a and i. There are two parts to put this question. First of all, in the first part, you're required to find z1 and z2 in the form r cis theta. r cis theta here implies uh, the modulus argument form. So you will need to use an argon diagram to help you to find the, uh, the complex number in modulus argument form. I'll show you later how that can be done. Next. The second part, and hence find expression for z1 over z2 raised to the power 6 in terms of a and i. Hence, here means that you have to use the answers which you obtain in the first part of the question to help you to find this answer to the second part of the question. So please try to apply this technique when you work on uh, questions that has the word hence in them. Okay, so now. Let's move on to finding the modulus argument form of z1. Here I have an argon diagram. Okay, uh, z1 equals to a plus a root 3i. So first of all, uh, our real values is on the horizontal axis. Our imaginary value is on the vertical axis. a is our real value and we place it on the horizontal. a root 3 is our imaginary value imaginary value and we place it on the vertical axis. First we need to find the argument. The argument is actually the angle made by the red line and the horizontal axis. Okay. To find that we need to use inverse tangent a root 3 over a. The a actually cancels out so I'm crossing them out. Okay. After you cancel them out, okay, you, you actually get root 3. So inverse tangent of root 3 is actually 60 degrees, but we need here we need to express it in radians, so it actually is pi over 3. Okay, after finding the argument, we need to find the modulus. The modulus is actually the length of or the magnitude of the red line. And we can actually use Pythagoras theorem to help us find it. So to find the modulus of z1, what we do is we take a squared plus bracket a root 3 squared. So that gives you uh, a squared plus 3a squared. a squared plus 3a squared is 4a squared. We square root that and we will <coughs> get 2a. Okay, now we found the modulus. We can now express z1 in its modulus argument form. z1 can be written as 2a cis pi over 3. Next, we're going to find the um, modulus argument form for z2. Okay, for z2, since the imaginary is a negative, it's negative i, so we draw the diagram differently. So you can see that uh, it's, you know, found the, we actually uh, draw the negative, the imaginary value to be negative below. In order to find the argument uh, delta 2, what we do is we do inverse tangent of negative 1 over 1. So there are two ways to go about this. You can actually move in anti-clockwise direction. So you can go, as you can see, I drew a red circle there and stopping at the red line. Okay, you, if you find uh, you go on an uh, anti-clockwise motion, then your answer will be 7 pi over 4. 
That's because inverse tangent of negative 1 over 1 is negative pi over 4. Okay, negative pi over 4 is when you go, go on a clockwise motion. See the clockwise motion here. You get negative pi over 4. Okay, uh, but if you choose to go in anticlockwise, all you need to do is to take 2 pi minus pi over 4, and there you have, you get 7 pi over 4. Okay, next we'll find our uh, our modulus. Modulus of uh, z2 is actually square root 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. When you have negative 1 squared, right, uh, it becomes a positive. That's why you get 1 squared plus 1 squared, which gives you square root 2. So the modulus of z2 is square root 2. Okay, so now we can express uh, z2 in modulus argument form. Square root 2 cis neg negative pi over 4. I prefer using the argument as negative pi over 4 because I find it a lot easier to compute. But uh, you can leave it in, as 7 pi over 4. That's, that's, uh, not, that's correct as well. Okay, so next we shall uh, work on the second part of the question, which is to find z1 over z2 raised to the power 6. Okay, we have to use the answers found in the first part, which is the modulus argument form of uh, z1 and z2. So let's work inside the brackets first. When you take uh, two complex numbers and you try to divide them, what happens is you actually divide the modulus, but you subtract the argument. So be careful with that. You need to subtract the argument. Okay, so 2a over root 2, right, that would give you root 2a, okay, you can see root 2a here, that's your uh, modulus after you have divided. Because you subtract your argument, so you take pi over 3 minus negative pi over 4. So negative and negative, it gives you a plus. So essentially, it means you take 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. So that gives you uh, 7 pi over 12. So it's root 2a cis 7 pi over 12 raised to power 6. Okay, so after have, we have found the, uh, the insides, we solve the inside of the brackets, we have to solve the power. Okay, so to solve the power, it's a very important rule that you need to know. It's the De Morphe's theorem. De Morphe's theorem is a very effective method to actually help you to do uh, expansions or complex numbers especially when they are raised to powers, it's so much quicker if you use the Morphe theorem than if you, you know, try to work it out and expand it individually. So it's a very powerful tool that you must use whenever you have to solve complex numbers that are raised to powers. Okay, so here we have, okay, so the Morphe theorem here, you can see for the Morphe theorem, what we do is we raise the magnitude or the, uh, modulus to power n, but we multiply the argument by n. Okay, so please note that the Morphe theorem is found in your formal booklet, so don't worry if you do not, uh, you know, can't, you can't remember it, you can still refer to your formal booklet. Okay, so there we have uh, root 2a raised to power 6. Okay, the modulus has to be raised to power 6. The argument, what we do is we multiply it by 6. So root to a raised to power 6, you get 8, a to power 6, okay, and 7 pi over 12 times 6 is 7 pi over 2. All right, so we need to simplify 7 pi over 2, okay, I'm going to show you using the little diagram on the left here, you can see, okay, 7 pi over 2, basically what happens is, uh, you know, when you move 2 pi, you make one full circle. Okay, so 4 pi over 2 is one full circle. So first, we do one full circle. Then, uh, because it's 7 pi over 2, so there's extra 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 means we do half of a circle, then another uh, quarter. So, you could actually write it out as 7 pi over 2, you can write it as 3 pi over 2, 
or negative pi over 2 if you decide to move in the clockwise direction. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, the modulus is 8a6. Argument is negative pi over 2, or you could write it as 3 pi over 2 as well. So the expression is 8a6 cis negative pi over 2. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. For more tips on IB Math, please visit our website at www.ibsuper.com.sg. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.